You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. 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 Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Dance Moms After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's Dance Moms After Show. I didn't know what went on. Fly, fly. I can't hear my echo. Yeah. I can't hear my echo. Audio, <laughs> audio. I cannot, I cannot hear it. What's up, everyone? Bing is for doing, and we are doing yet another after show for <laughs> Dance Moms. Which has been going on now for right. 36 <laughs> episodes. Also known as an eternity. <laughs> I, who ordered all these episodes? I mean, I love it. Thank you, Lifetime. But I will say, Timor, that Abby's getting exceptionally darker every episode. I mean, that's a new shade of orange not found in, in nature. <laughs> you are so mean. <laughs> Too she much. She doesn't look orange to me. She looks regular. Oh, regularly she orange. Regular. <laughs> she does. She bronzed. Well, anyway, uh, we are now here with uh, a lovely set of new co-hosts, seeing as how we can't keep <laughs> we our co-hosts straight on, on here. So, uh, starting with me, I'm your host, Tony Moore, and over here we have... Tom Connolly. Hi, Tom. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. You're Good welcome. to be here. Well, you know, thank you for being here, because if not, it would either just be me or my lovely other co-host who's been gone and MIA for quite some time, my twinsy. Hi, everyone. Jason J. Carter here. How you doing? Bye. So glad to be back. Got to give a shout out to Giselle Ugardi. She is um, not with us tonight, but Giselle, we miss you. Smooches XOXO. And Chris Kangaroo, who hasn't been here since. <laughs> God knows when. Um, but a little shout out to him, too, as well. And last but not least, we have. Hey, guys. I'm Monica Michelle. Oh, that one. Is that your real name? Yes. What's your last name? <laughs> Everyone, because of Michelle, that's like, there's always like a, hi, I'm Taisha Michelle. No, that's a middle name. Jones. <laughs> Listen, she's trying to be a professional. She she has her stage name. It's her middle name. Everybody knows uh, her real name. Uh, Jason J. Carter. I mean, <laughs> y'all yeah, can't know my middle name. You got to pay for that one. Going all full out. <laughs> all right, so let's get into this episode, um, starting with the pyramid. Uh, we had Paige still at the bottom. <laughs> Always at the bottom. <laughs> this poor girl. Poor Paige. She cannot, she cannot move up at all. Then we had Nia. Nia has fallen down the pyramid. You know, week. but seeing that, Nia's always the unsung underdog. But, I mean, look, at least she made it to the middle of the pyramid. That's a huge accomplishment. So she, she had a taste. Her. What's that saying? You can reach for the stars, but if you land above the clouds and whatever... Boom, Nia, there you go. Hashtag, is, that's your model for she life. She has fallen. But, um, <laughs> but moving up the pyramid is Brooke. She is moving yeah. up. She moved up because she's usually right next to Paige. <laughs> <laughs> or she's usually not on the pyramid at all. Or she's but, usually right. hung over somewhere. But oh, now wow. now she's, uh, she's moved up a little bit. And then uh, another fallen star was Kendall. Yes. I I agree. The the solo last week, eh, mm, it could have been it could have been so much better because she just she just needed to bring on this fierceness, this sass of this queen of Egypt, the Nile, whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then she just didn't bring it, so that's where she was. And then um, <laughs> I have here Peyton, and then I wrote underneath. <laughs> yeah, she's like the new girl in town. Yeah. Well, she's the no, she's the co-star this week <laughs> of uh, a guest star of Abby's. Uh, I almost said Abby's ultimate dance competition. Of the, of the mm-hmm. under the Abby umbrella, but under the Abby umbrella. Right. But no. she's she's been there a, a few times and she keeps trying she's, she's to in the make universe. her way on the, She keeps trying to make her yeah. way onto the well, team. Well, she makes it in, but her mom always ruins it for. Her, I the, feel the moms <laughs> always ruin it. Everything, but yeah. especially Everything. for Peyton. What's it, um, Leslie always ruins it for Because Leslie has a mouth on her. And yeah. a bump it. <laughs> <laughs> she does. That's the worst oh bump it God. ever. It's like, I got my bump it. 
She can't help it that she lives in Pittsburgh where she doesn't know that the bump it is just as much out of style as a bell bottom jean. Word. They don't have hairstylists for them. They got to do them some. Them, them well, clearly, no. clearly they are okay. doing their own hair. Yes. Clearly, Annika, I'm glad you said that because they flamed after buzzers flamed me on YouTube, called me a misogynist because I was commenting on their these women's appearance. Listen, if you're on television, be hot, right? You could be 55 and hot. <laughs> Look at Oprah. But there's the difference. <laughs> Oprah has a team. Jason, when you when you talk about. Uh, like how they look and stuff. It's fine to comment, but when you start going to eyebrows <laughs> and how their eyebrows are and how their their the hairstyle light. is, the lighting that's yeah. a, that's, a bit, that's it, a bit much. That's a bit much. It's like Sex in the City. Every season they got prettier and prettier and prettier. I was hoping the same thing would be for Dance Moms. However, I know this is an ongoing season. It's like a <laughs> it's not even a full time job. It's a lifestyle. So, but you know they have the money to be decent looking on TV. I think they should do that. It's I feel, what was it season three of Dance Moms or season yeah now it's three. It's season three. Three. Yeah. Point five. I yeah. feel like I feel like after all these episodes, we have lived through seasons four, five, and six. We lived through eight seasons. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're gonna they come back. Maddie's gonna be married. <laughs> Nia's gonna like I don't know, like shaved her head, ball gone off to some kind of you know some. Why Nia got career. to be the I don't know. I don't mean. She's out after the show. Ruth. Yeah. Okay, let's get back to the pyramid. Uh, then we had Chloe, uh, and then Asia, who won was down at the bottom because of the group number. She yeah, slipped. She, fell. she slipped. She slipped and fell. In her defense, though, she didn't make a good point. She went, had to do that handstand for, like, a minute over these girls. <laughs> oh, no, that was uh, that was Mackenzie. Mackenzie. Oh. McK- oh, McK- Mackenzie Maddie. bit yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> Speaking, and then next we do have Mackenzie. And, yeah, Mackenzie did. She ate it. She ate it. But, I, but she did it so well last week. But that was that's a long time a long to time. be on your hands like that. And she's... I mean, she's got to be, what, like this tall? I mean, she's, she's, she's got to be stronger high. than me, probably, I she's, think. She's an infant. <laughs> I don't think I can hold myself up that long. Well, I can't she, even get myself to do a handstand, so. I mean, Listen, yeah. I, am, I am six foot two and a half <laughs> and some odd pounds. There is no way in the world that all this weight and height can go over anybody's head. Mm. For that long, for I mean, it was for like it was like six girls, like you know, <laughs> I don't even, know, like Fear Factor. Not even for a second. Y'all remember the, y'all know the the failed twerk video? Yeah. Oh my god. That's how I would look if I tried to do a handstand, <laughs> just fail. Make sure you record it if you ever decide yeah, to do don't, it. Yeah, don't no. go by candles because that's no. gonna be bad. Um, and then of no. course at the top of the pyramid is Maddie. Yay. Who would have guessed that? I, I, I really wasn't gonna I, guess that this week. I was gonna guess. Uh, Paige, but <laughs> Maddie made it to the top. The day, Maddie's on the top again. The day that Paige or Brooke makes it to the top of the pyramid will be the day that the Abby Lee Miller Dance Company turns no. into the Kelly Dance. That'll be the series company. finale of Dance Moms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and on the series finale actually, of Dance Moms. Actually, there wouldn't, there wouldn't even be an episode. It'd be like, and at the top is Paige. Thank you for Done. tuning in to <laughs> Dance Moms. <laughs> and scene. Um, All right, so uh, it's Nationals, and uh, the girls are getting ready to attend Nationals in New Orleans, Louisiana. Horrible place. Along with our favorite other rival dance group, the Candy Apples. The Candy Apples. Dun, dun, dun. Who has uh, more guest stars and co-stars in their group this week, but we'll we'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) So uh, the Abby Lee Miller Dance Company, uh, they, for the group number, they plan on doing, um, I don't know what is going on with this cord. <laughs> you guys are all tangled up But there. it's like, hold on. Oh, no, not hold on. For those of you who are watching <laughs> our podcast. Or listening to our or podcast. Or listening to our, our podcast. I am dangling around with my cord. <laughs> I have to give a description because Marissa was uh, wrote me one week and was like, the people on the podcast don't know what you're doing. You have to describe it. So now I feel the need to describe everything the that I do. The cord is a vinyl texture <laughs> and... It's too much. All right, so uh, group number, they're doing a tribute to Hurricane Katrina. Can we talk about that real quick? <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, first of all, you know, when you're explaining, when Abby was explaining their tribute to Hurricane Katrina, and, you know, New Orleans was devastated by this hurricane, and I was like, Abby, do you know how new, I wanted her to give like a little backstory about what happened in New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina, but it was just like. Maybe I, she did, and it got cut out. Oh, maybe. Yeah. You know what, but. In my world, she didn't explain it. So it was just, it seemed like the, the whole piece was just kind of contrived. And then also, you know, they do these routines with this inspiration, but there's no, like, tie-in to the inspiration in the choreography. You know, it just drives me insane. I would have rather her had said, 
we're doing a piece about New Orleans, a big, easy second line. You know, for all those after buzzers that are listening that know what a second line is in New Orleans, if someone dies, it's a parade they have because they celebrate their life instead of mourning their death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I just feel like they, they, they come up with these contrived ideas for these right. song, for these routines that are just like, we're going to do a routine about smog in L.A., you know? It's just <laughs> it has so like nothing stupid. to do with nothing, Yeah, it's just so bad. I don't know. Why would anybody do a routine to smog in L.A.? Well, I mean, I, I thought it was I thought it was very, you know, convenient. We're in New Orleans and we're doing a tribute. You know, eight years ago, Katrina ravaged New Orleans. Yes, yeah. you know what? And, you know, my, my family was victim to Katrina, and I, I, I get it. However, it just seemed like, not original or not even borderline creative. I think what he's trying to say, or what I'm getting at least with what you're saying, is mm-hmm. like the when you watch it and you don't know if it's a Hurricane Katrina tribute, you wouldn't know exactly, that's what yeah. it's about. Like you'd be like, oh, it's a cute dance. Like you well, wouldn't think like, oh, did y'all want a... them to row in on a canoe? Well, no, first or like, <laughs> but, but like it, there's a way to do it to make right. it more. Okay, case in point, when she to those fallen that I've gone too soon, you know, Anna Nicole Smith, <laughs> Amy Winehouse, Selena, we were like, really, Abby? Come on now. I okay, lo- well, that that tribute dance, it would have been better had <laughs> the <laughs> costumes not been in white and had we actually, like, seen the actual costumes <laughs> so that we would know who they were. I would have loved the Amy Winehouse girl to have, like, a cigarette in her mouth <laughs> behind fun. her. Dude. Yeah, you know? It's just, oh. the point I'm making everyone and after Buzz, people listening at home is that if you're gonna pay tribute to something that's that poignant and that is that powerful and that has affected a lot of people and that is still too soon to do a tribute to, because people still have issues about Katrina in New Orleans, make sure it's spot on to the T. And we should actually be able to see in the choreography some kind of, so they should convey Emotion or yeah. loss or yeah. I could, it was, I, tragedy. There was it, it was, there was tragic. Pain. There was <laughs> there was pain. Look at Maddie's face. But oh that's the, the, she always stands. Yeah, like Maddie that. probably has an ugly cry too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It For those die. of you who are listening to our podcast, <laughs> I just did the Maddie face again. It's spot on. It's For those of you who are listening to our podcast, <laughs> please start watching it. I know. Come on, people. <laughs> Visit youtube.com slash afterbuzztv. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we also have um, Abby decided that she was going to make the girls compete against each other for solo, for the solo spots. Because um, there were only three solos, but she made um, each of the girls compete. How did you guys feel about that? I kind of feel like when Abby does things like that, she's preparing them for like the real world. Like there's a spot, and now you have to compete and work hard for it. I think, well, I, I mean, I agree to some extent that there is an underlying um, lesson that she's trying to teach them when they get to the professional world. However, I think they've gotten a lot of that in the last 3.5 seasons as they've been with the AOC. But it never ends. It never ends. Uh, I know, of course. You're, you're the hustle on the grind never ends. Your right. competitive life as a dancer does not end as long as you're in this industry. No, and, and that, and I concur with that as well. However, I do think that Abby needs to start, maybe there's time where she can let the lesson, the let the, the teaching of lessons go to the wayside and let these kids enjoy what they're doing. Can't, and they can't and, waste a second. And they're competing already in a, there's, there's, Sometimes there's just not room for competition amongst competition. There's I mean, always room for competition. Yeah, but they, and but she also she also set it up to where it was kind of obvious who the winner was going to be of each for competition. For each round, yeah. So it wasn't a oh well you know someone this could actually if it was Maddie versus Chloe okay that could be a competition of you know yeah. who, you know who's who's going to do better but to do Paige versus Nia versus Maddie. Well, Tom, like, did you did you see how the parents and their vignettes were like honest about? Oh, it? Yeah. My kid yeah. sucks compared to this kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, my kid ain't got no <laughs> skills. Melissa, <laughs> Melissa Flat Out was like, "Well, what?" Did, well, right, she said, "She said, she said you can't." You can, wait, hold on. She said, "Melissa thinks Asia will be picked," and then when they were doing the, uh, the Maddie. Nia. Matt, Matt, or Mackenzie in Asia when they were. Yeah. She's like, Mackenzie don't have a prayer. Yeah. She was like, she's like, Mackenzie, you're not Asia. Yeah. She's like, you're fabulous, Kenzie, yeah. but you're no Asia. Yeah. Gotcha. That's like, exactly the quote. Yeah. Coming from her mom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, this child is what, like, eight? Already has, like, <laughs> Maddie has a big sister to live up to, you know? He's therapy. <laughs> <laughs> the, best, the, the best quote from Melissa was like, she basically flat out was like, 
oh, Maddie's got this, but it's really nice of Abby to let the kids dance. <laughs> yes. It's so I nice of them just to let the kids dance. With her. Maddie, Maddie dance, with her. let them dance with her. Now, Maddie's going to get the solo, but it's so <laughs> nice of Abby just to let the kids dance. Dance with Maddie. Yeah. 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 Uh, and yeah. all the moms just, like, turn to her, like, wow, ah, you yeah. know? Let them, let them think they're going to maybe make it. Maybe. But we're going to crush their you dreams know, in the it, end. You know, and, not, and Maddie is definitely talented, and I think Maddie's a great dancer, mm -hmm. but Maddie Maddie is not. Maddie is lacking in some areas that could that could really put her over the top and make her an exquisite dancer. Maddie doesn't have. I feel well, not I, exquisite. I, and I'm so, I'm probably gonna get in trouble for saying this, but I feel that Maddie lacks lacks life in her movement. Technically, she's on point. That's wonderful. I mean, she could spin, twirl, shablam, shabligal, mm -hmm. do whatever. But as a performer, you have to have that engine driving the car. You have to have the fire within. <laughs> Dun, dun. I feel like a freaking <laughs> get your life book, and I feel like Maddie. Maddie sometimes that that's nowhere to be found. Yes, she's emoting, she's giving you the face, but that can all be learned. That that could all be practiced and 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 cultivated. Whereas a true performer, like I said, like Beyonce, when she gets on stage, that fire is lit, and those engines are charged, and you she's see on it, it on yeah. it, and it, it's passion. Maddie lacks passion. Sorry. I mean, it's the last episode, <laughs> you know, deal with it. But really. Last episode for like a week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, so I think Melissa, I, I think Melissa, the mom's, the Melissa's, of course, that's her child. So, of course, she's going to be like, yes, my baby's everything. But I do think if they step back and really look at the fundamentals and like the, the, the foundation of dance, Maddie has a lot to learn. Yeah. Boom. Um, what about that little dance off between Mackenzie and Asia? Yeah, the, the, uh, the improv. Mm -hmm. There wasn't one. <laughs> and she for just the, stops. But for the first time, Melissa was like, "Dance, Kenzie, dance, <laughs> yeah, dance, she was really and you're not gonna dance. Sit, sit." I was like, "Whoa, mm -hmm. where did this Melissa come yeah. from?" Yeah, she was pissed. She was for no reason. Well, then it just made Mackenzie not want to do it even no, more. It, no, she had a point. Like, Mackenzie, you do this at home, mm. so dance. Asia was like, "Boom, give me <laughs> leg, music," and twirl. she was gone. She leg, didn't need face. music. She could have just no, started dancing. She was, you know, but. What Abby was trying to instill is that, like like she said, what if I sent you out for a commercial audition? They said, right. improv, you're going to make me look like a fool. Whereas Asia, who already at that age is very, very professional, obviously, she just went right in and just yeah. did it. So that's a little fireball. I feel like Mackenzie likes to dance. I think that she enjoys it. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's what is her passion. Like, I feel like her mom wants it more than her. And, right. of course, she's like, has that pressure of Maddie being her older sister. She's living in her sister's shadow. You know, <laughs> her sister's doing the whole, like... It's so... You know, so Ashley, you know what I mean? Ashley Simpson did wrote a whole <laughs> song about that. Um, yeah. On her first album. She yeah. did. Living in the shadow. Of someone Living else's in dream. the shadow. That was not your cue Someone to sing. I, but I, that was a great <laughs> album. But you know, and no one else is so funny though. And I've that never heard that, that song, scene, so. that was a great album. Ashley Simpson autobiography. Okay. Get it. Um, <laughs> what was also oh, Tom and you guys what was also very telling about that about that scene too is what you said, Tony, is that Asia is a professional dancer. Abby is like when you go. Abby was like when you go to auditions in Los Angeles. This is what's going to happen. They're doing these kids a disservice by not exposing them to that. Mm -hmm. Because if Mackenzie would be going back and forth to L.A. and working with different choreographers that are here in the business relevant, she would know that that's what's expected of her. Yeah. And because Asia is getting, Asia is more exposed to that, she's on point. And furthermore, it was it was a clear inclination of how intimidated Mackenzie is of Asia. Because yeah. she was like, they're like, oh my God, it's good. I'm like, damn, ah, she's so You know what I mean? It was just, it was, Asia was dancing as if Mackenzie was not even there. <laughs> yeah, Asia she was like, like oh, hap, 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 hap. She, she I mean, gone. that's what you do. That's how they roll. But that's because Asia has been indoctrinated and trained to be that. Asia is bred to be in this business. Since and these girls are like just two. like, right. And Pittsburgh's not that small of a city. You know, Pittsburgh's yeah. a major metropolitan yeah. area. I'm sure they could find ways to get these kids more well-rounded. Kind of. Yeah, besides on this show, but maybe they're just too comfortable. I Who think, knows? I think they just don't... Well, I think they're kind of just locked into being on this show. As much... Like, as Asia could kind of come and go. I'm sure... I mean, you know? I'm sure they can also go out and train with other people, too. And and that and that's and that's also a testament to Abby, because if you want to be... If you want to remain competitive, like, as hosts, if we want to remain competitive, we learn different techniques. We train. We make sure that we're, we're yeah. well-rounded and up to... And, and, and abreast on what's hot and what we should be doing as hosts. Same thing with dancers. If Abby was that much on her business and that much on her game and, and realized that buyers of dancers, meaning agents, casting directors, people want to have people that are well-rounded, that can do all the current styles, she would expose her 
students to that. And Abby is like a dance is dance royalty now, so she can have that at her disposal mm -hmm. any choreographer majority of the time. So it's by choice, which is doing these kids a terrible disservice. That's true. Off my soapbox. <laughs> But I think, I mean, I think after they leave Abby, I mean, I think they will be well-rounded enough yeah. to definitely come to New York or LA. Right, they've gone through it's, Well, a lot. yeah, maybe they've been traumatized enough by then that, you know, they'll just be able to walk into a studio and, Take rejection you know, like nothing. Yeah, <laughs> and just be like, okay. <laughs> well, right, right, right. I mean, Abby, Abby has said it herself. She trains stars, mm -hmm. and uh, she has results of that. Who is she trained as a star? She, she, uh, the last time she was here, she talked about a, a boy who, uh, first audition landed his first, uh, Broadway show. Oh, okay. So, and I'm pretty sure there are many, many, sure right, but we don't know people of. Yeah. that, that <laughs> have, like, that have gone through the Abby Lee Miller Dance Company and have gone off to do great things and, you know, the training that they get there prepares them. And I, no, I, and I agree, I agree with that, but we're, we have to, we have to talk about what you, we're seeing but, on TV. But do you really think that these dancers are not seeking out any other type of training? Well, and okay, I don't, I, again, I'm only going by what I watch on television. I, I don't know what, I don't know what they you do. You brought it in. I, yeah, well, I don't, I'm, no, I'm serious, I don't know what they do outside, outside, but what, what, because we're talking, we're here to talk about the show, and what we saw tonight was, you know, McKinsey not freestyling, which, as a dancer, you know that freestyle. Like as a dancer, that's what you learn how to do first. That's they, how I began dancing was freestyle. They usually always say like or, fifteen second freestyle or fifteen right. second this. Like you, you know, if you were like count. most dancers, especially the hip hop dance, that's what you did before you started. That's what got you into dancing was you freestyling, you figuring out what to do. So, watching tonight, I was just shocked to see that Mackenzie wasn't able to hold her own in that in that I guess in that facet of dance. Right. I think she was just so intimidated by Asia. By Shit, Asia. I'd, be intimidated. Intimidated. I'd be intimidated by <laughs> yeah. that eyebrow, man. Not me. <laughs> I would not be intimidated by Asia at all. Bring it. Uh -oh. I would, uh, I would like a dance off. Here. I would personally go to Toys R Us and buy her a Fisher Price seat that she can have after we have a our dance. And she, yeah, she built it. Well, look, <laughs> after Birds of Evolution, this is what you can do. You can go to iTunes, rate us, comment, tell a friend. We love hearing all your feedback, even if it's good, even if it's bad. Things we can do to improve our show here on After Buzz. Give us five stars. We love shout outs. We'll give you a shout out too. And also, if you want to have a really good Friday night date night movie, please get Serial Buddies. Hands down, one of the funniest movies so I have ever good. seen. And I've seen a lot of funny movies. And Serial Buddies was off the hook. Maria Menounos, uh, who, Kathy Lee Gifford. I mean, the world's in this movie. And I was depressed last week, and I watched it, and I was not depressed anymore. And that takes a lot for me not to be depressed because I'm one depressed mofo. So get Serial <laughs> Buddies. It's going to be good. You're going to love it. Download iTunes. Do it. That's how we roll here at AfterBuzz TV. Tony, as you were. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> Why, thank you, Jason. I feel like you just tossed it back to the I did. <laughs> I did. That was called a toss. In the studio. Right. <laughs> All right, back so to the studio, Tony. let's get to this, uh, some drama, because there was a lot of drama um, at Abby Lee, starting with, first of all, Leslie. Leslie, where's my camera? Leslie. Leslie. <laughs> Leslie. Here at AfterBuzz TV, I, your host, Tony, likes to give the official Have a Seat Award. <laughs> you can officially have several seats. If you are seeing this, please walk out your home, go to the nearest bus stop, have a bench, and wait for the bus to have several more seats to take you to a stadium where you can have several more. Because she is trying it. She's doing way too she, much. She it's cannot, that bump it. She cannot be grateful for Peyton to be a part of the team. She, Abby clearly said, welcome to the team for this for week. This week. <laughs> and, and then she goes to the mom. I'm on the team. I'm on the team. I wanted to go. Can somebody please replay Refresh. what Abby just said? She said, "Welcome to the team this, this week." week. Right. That's it. That means you're only on the team for this week. For national, like, you are the guest star, co-star of the mm -hmm. Abby Lee Miller Dance Company. Leslie reminds me of that girl in high school that just wanted so bad to be cool and was always at the parties making a fool of herself just for the sake of and and that or yeah guys. that bitterness mm -hmm. has has just stayed with her into her adult because she just goes off and like there's just like this abrasive kind of um i don't know what just the nasty. word is like, yeah. you, like you, you can, they can't have a conversation with her without her just you like know, jumping and yeah just off. getting right down to like just yelling the at them douchebagginess and can, can a girl be a douchebag <laughs> it's okay, possible yes. we saw it yeah she's a yeah. douchebag but she, and she's always constantly pointing out your kids get the opportunities that peyton wish she had well if peyton Stop having such an attitude 
right. she could have been she a part of the, the team. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, and with this, you're getting a taste. That we're seeing you on Dance Moms. I mean, hello, I would like to be on Dance Moms. I would like to be on top of the pyramid, but do you see me writing in the Lifetime telling them to put a six foot two black guy <laughs> on Dance Mom? No. So Appreciate what you have at the time that you have it. Have yourself several seats and get your life. Get your life. Yeah, because so, I mean, get your life. They've had to have been at that studio for a while because because yeah, she's coming in and out of the show. Well, she's, yeah. right. Yeah. So it's not like they just kind of showed up this week out and, of nowhere. And then Abby's like, "You're on the team for the right. week." But so, like I said before, I think Leslie just constantly messes things up for Peyton. And Peyton does have, did have an attitude at first. Yeah. But it doesn't seem like she has that much of an attitude lately. But no, because she's, she's learned to be quiet. Yeah. Ever since that one scene where she was like, I'm not Kendall, I'm not Maddie, mm-hmm. I'm Peyton. Mm-hmm. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> I mean, but... You're going to see the other side of that dough is what you're about to see, Peyton. <laughs> and she's playing, Leslie's playing the whole, um, the like one upper, but the negative one upper. Like, at least yeah. your kid, you know, does yeah. this. And your kid, like, you're so lucky. And like, it's always pointing out the negative instead of, like you said, seeing the positive of the, okay, we're having this opportunity. If I want right. my child to be on this team more than a week, I need to prove to Abby, prove to these moms, prove to these kids, right. you know, that we deserve to be here and we're going to stay. She's not taking a yeah. proactive approach to being there. It's, there's a, there's a, an air of insecurity all the time. And like, it's, it's one thing to be competitive all the time because, you know, you're in this industry, like you said, Tony, the competition never stops. Never stops, my mm-hmm. bad. Come to you. But, um, <laughs> never stops. Um, I do think the moms that last are the ones that come in, chill, kick back, and just roll with the punches and they get crazy when they have to. Leslie's just crazy. Leslie comes out of her car swinging razor blades. It's like, <laughs> like she's like a bull. She's like a little pit bull ready to go. And I love how she thought just because Asia, the spot opened up, she's like, oh, we're moving in. It's like, that's not how it works. Right. No. You know, just because a a spot opened up doesn't mean you're the one who's going to take it. But automatically in her head, she's like, a spot opened up. We're coming in. We're moving in, you know. I think she she needs to take a cue from Holly. Because Holly is the one that sits back and will take it, take it. But then once something, you know, something she needs to fight for, she will fight for it. I have a problem with you. I don't know why Nia was wearing a fro. It was just very offensive (laughs) to me. Like, you know, she she was really pissed Mm -hmm. about that fro. Yes, she was. Yeah, Leslie. Um, So then uh, Christy with a K. Mm. announces to the moms that Asia will no longer be competing anymore. Um, that she's had so Wait. many wonderful opportunities open up for her that she will no longer be competing. Um, duh. I mean, who would not want to hop on Asia and have like her do this, that, and the other? So kudos to Asia yeah, and, good for and her. her mom. It, it was very, it was sad. It was very definitive right there for that in that moment because Asia's so young and the mom's like, you know, Asia's prof- and she is a professional now. There yeah. comes a time when you can't you have to stop tinkering under the hood and drive the car. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, Asia's moving on. I do think that um, Asia, sh- I, her not competing doesn't mean that she won't still train because, I mean, as a dancer, you're always constantly training, but I, I feel like Asia Asia was one of the, is an arc. You know how in shows you have an arc mm-hmm. of people who are, and they're gone? I feel like Asia's time has come to an end anyways because... In that place. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. And and another thing is that she was going to be the next Maddie, right? Where did the, yeah, do they definitely. live in Pittsburgh? I'm I don't confused. think they do. Like, I think they, they, I think they're from out here. Somewhere. Right. So they just like have they because I mean do they ho- just hang out in Pittsburgh? We're just going to be in Pittsburgh this week <laughs> for a year. I don't know where we're going to stay. We're just going to hang out in Pittsburgh. Guest star. You know, it's just it's just very weird. But Asia leaving is good. I I, I would want. They they should rotate. They shouldn't have fresh blood because even the the veterans, the the OG girls, right. are kind of getting long in the tooth. You know, mm-hmm. like yeah. I mean, Brooke, Brooke, Brooke's ready in college. Brooke's at the Keggers. And this, she's sixteen around the corner. Right. Mm-hmm. This reminds me. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of the person um, on YouTube who commented because um, I uh, last time I was here, which was two weeks ago. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I com- I made a comment about Brooke's face, and this person wrote in like, "Have you never had teenagers before? They just get to like that age or something like that where they just always have that face and blah blah blah." And I thought to myself, "I was a teenager and I didn't have that face." Yeah. Now I did go through a phase where I didn't want to smile. Well, I thought like all the pictures that I took, it would just look better and hotter if I was just all serious. Um, but I never had that I don't care face. Yeah. So where that comes from, I don't know. I mean, I was a teenager. I don't have teenagers. I'm too young to have a teenager. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I've grown up with teenagers, and not very many have that I don't care face like Brooke does, especially like, on national TV. Brooke <laughs> has that Lindsay Lohan mugshot face all the time. And maybe she, but, and, and the thing about Brooke <laughs> is that, <laughs> really, I mean, but that, <laughs> um, 
But Brooke, uh, Brooke's so talented. That's and that and that's the thing about people is that that's always some people just they aren't find something. Yeah, and aren't I into it. Hurt. And I live. I think she just Although outgrown. Over right. My bad, I just dance. I just dance to get through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think session. she wants to move on, but she can't. Right. At well, the, at she's under time. contract yeah. with Lifetime Television. She's like, I can't go. Uh, can I go? Now, let's get to the real rumble in the jungle. Rumble in the quarter. That took place <laughs> in the middle of the street, <laughs> Bourbon Street. With Leslie and Chrissy with the C. But not like that doesn't happen every day in New Orleans. But, um, right. That that was a little... Okay, one of the things, Tony, I have issues with with this show, and people have really gotten mad at me online for saying this, too, is that it's just such horrible displays of bad parenting. They want to comment about Basketball Wives and all these other shows on TV talking about women not being good role models, blah, blah, blah. I get mm. that. On those shows, their children are not involved. On Dance Mom, there are kids directly in the line of fire. Yeah. Right. And these women are calling, you know, B words, mm-hmm. the C U and T word. I mean the just kids aren't the kids aren't around. I know for that happening. But their view but they're, they're also gonna they're it. gonna watch it and well, I'm sure yeah. they're at the screeners. And people are gonna tell them. And it. Leslie pretty much full on assaulted Christy with and, a voodoo doll. And Christy's reaction was a little toss and then a <laughs> That's and then she got drink, drink in tossed her in her face. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but then afterwards it was like a you know, <laughs> and those streaks sting when they get in your eye. They do, but she did. didn't sting Leslie. She was just like going. Because <laughs> Leslie's not like human. Leslie, Punch him. Leslie was like a firecracker. She was. She reminded me of the drunk girl who's always like, "Come on, hit me, hit me. Come on, come on, hit me." Y'all don't act like y'all her. haven't seen those those girls. <laughs> no, yeah, no, yeah. the drunk in the club coming out like, "What you want? You have a problem with me?" Yeah, right. <laughs> poor Leslie. Poor and Leslie. it it also just didn't really even make any sense no. of how it even came about. Right. It was like, just, she was just no. like, you're a dr-. like, we didn't even you're hear her say drunk. that she said she was a drunk. And she it, was just more like Christy with a C was standing on her phone. And it was almost like they were waiting for her and didn't, you know, she didn't come over right away. And then she was kind of pissed that they were waiting. Yeah. And so. flashback, we're back in the studio. And that, okay, that was a weird edit because we were just <laughs> on Bourbon Street and then we're back in the studio and all of a sudden... Well, it's supposed to be the next day. But right. yeah, but it was very Right, very it was fast. very weird. Right. It was like, and then Chrissy with the Chrissy with the K is like, like, all pissed. And you're like, what are you... Because she's not here to defend herself. Well, where did she go? Is she right. drunk in the corner still? Like, well, where, yeah. where is she? She missed her call time she, for the day, I guess. Is she praying to the porcelain god today because she's hungover? Because I was like, didn't this just happen? And how awesome did you magically <laughs> teleport back into the studio? The voodoo New Orleans, it can yeah. happen. It can well, happen. but I do applaud Chrissy. Chrissy with a K for calling out the BS that the moms were doing. Like, right. like they were trying to really put it all on Leslie, and like Chrissy didn't have anything to do with it, and they both were equally responsible for it. Yeah, so. all right, Jill. Jill. That Jill. Right. Jill always trying to stir the pot. That trying to trying to get on whoever side is in the room with her. That's your side she goes up to. Tries to get a companion to join her. Yes. But I love how All I have to time. say in the fight that the, you see the two like you know PA not PAs or cameramen or whoever they were trying just, to jump just like in jumping in something. with their headphones and you see another cameraman on another angle like yeah. The, the well, they have flips. to jump in to to you know break up the fight or but whatever. So. Have you if you noticed no one was like trying to. I wouldn't want Christy because you know she's fine. Like she wasn't. They're all like well, up against Leslie's, Leslie, was all, like the crazy they, one. They were like this. They was like, <laughs> right? That's how I would have been. They all. I would have been watching them. it. I would put it on YouTube. Listen, I, <laughs> I, I tell my. Get that viral in a second. <laughs> I tell my friends all the time: if you get yourself into something that your mouth that if you get your mouth into something that Joe behind can't get out of, don't look at me to jump into that. Fight. Unless you got a gun. <laughs> oh, and if, if somebody has a gun, I'm gone. I'm down the street around the corner. And if you're not in the car with me, then you just by yourself. Um, so with that, because of that fight, um, Abby did um, the best thing that she could for the team. And she told Chrissy with the C, her and Chloe, goodbye. And told Leslie and Peyton, goodbye. But mm-hmm. Chloe was for the week. Leslie and Peyton wasn't. Well, yeah. but but Leslie and Peyton were only there for the week. Right. Anyway. Um, but but Chloe um, had. But it just goes to show that as, as parents, you know, you have there are consequences Which, towards your child. You know, you know what was really cool about that when after I that was one of in that moment I I gained more respect for Abby because she's all about winning, but she was willing to to sacrifice. take the high road and mm-hmm. sacrifice and be like, you know, you got to go. Yeah. I think that Abby in the past would have probably been like. Don't do it. Let's compete. But now, 
I think it, I think it was the most responsible thing for her. She's done in a long yeah. time, and I, it could be because of things that are going on in Abby's life. She, maybe she's, a, I mean, I don't know. She's evolving. She's, I, she seems a little warmer, a little um, not as abrasive, not as. I mean, she's still a, a big personality, but she's more accessible now. I'm feeling. I mean, I, that's just what I'm getting from her now in, the, in this final episode. So I was glad to see that. I was actually a little shocked. Happily shocked. I was like, yeah, that's right, Abby. You go ahead, kick them out, because that's how it should be. Yeah. You know, she's all about her team, but that was setting the right example, not only for her team, but for people at home watching. Right. That, you know, because mm-hmm. believe it or not, and what, what blows my mind is that people look up to these women and these kids now. I mean, as we see when they arrive at competition, yep. they, they're greeted with fanfare. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it was like it was like the parting of the seas when they yeah. when they yeah. both they had like Beyonce and just, fans blowing and they're just walking in, you know, and she's like, like waving and yeah. taking yeah. pictures and uh-uh. stopping. Uh, and... You are not celebrity. That's a mm-hmm. lot. Um, so cut to Candy Apples because we they were a part of the episode. Not a whole lot of drama over there, but a lot of guest stars and co stars as usual. Mm-hmm. Um, Anthony Burrell is no longer with Candy Apples. Drama. Insert Blake McGrath. McGrath. And um, a little history on Blake McGrath. He's danced for Janet Jackson, Mariah Carey, Christina Aguilera, everyone. And he's been on, and he did not win So You Think You Can Dance. However, he came quite close to it. Okay, he had a reality show, too. Yeah, oh, he, or he was oh. a part of a reality right oh, show. He? No, he, um, Dance Life. Yes. Jennifer Lopez's first attempt at a dancer show back oh, in 2006. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Shot at Millennium Dance Studio, which no longer has that part of the studio attached to it. Anybody know if he's related to, we were wondering, this Mark McCross? No. Because they kind of look. They're both Canadian. Well, Mark, I think Mark's had a lot of surgery. But Blake, the movie's the cheekbones. Let's know, Google they it. They kind of look a little... They look alike. I, thought, yeah. I mean, but, like, he's a younger mm, brother, obviously, mm, but... Mark McGrath... Um, after Brothers, if you know if Blake McGrath, the dancer, is related to Mark McGrath, former lead singer of Sugar Ray, tweet us, let us know, hit us up on YouTube and on and on iTunes. We would love to know the, the answer to that. It could be the chick bones. I think they look yeah, alike they, to I me, yeah, I so they really I was like, like huh, I wonder. Um, I was kind of surprised that uh, there were no solos given at Candy Apples. They only competed in a group. I think they just, I think she just wanted to yeah. put all her eggs in one basket and say, well, we're just going to try to beat uh, <laughs> Abby Lee with just <laughs> one group routine. Right. So, and, so if they can at least get one win over them, that's one, right. then, then having four or five losses. And Blake's for brilliant. Else. I mean, he's an amazing choreographer. He is. And he's, she even said that money is no object. She'll spend whatever she needs to spend to get. That's why she hired him. Yeah. I don't know how much to she get charges, the best of but, the best. you know. So. Well, she's paying her whole group. And I feel like that's Kathy's downfall is that – you need a group that is consistent and that will work together consistently. You don't need guest stars and co-stars. You don't need people coming in and out right. of, mm-hmm. of your dance company. Your whole dance company is comprised of people who will probably may or may not be there. Right. There's no one that is set. It's there not cohesive. People that come in and Except out. her yeah. daughter who doesn't dance. Yeah. <laughs> who, who has Baby. blank stare every day. Yeah. Here's the thing. Baby's my favorite. She's Tony, my favorite you hit the nail on the head. I love what you just said because it's the truth. Because you know, we're truth. always talking about how the reason why Abby Lee's dance dancers dance so well together is because they're always together. Yeah. They ha- they they my word they've cultivated a life together in, in dance mm-hmm. and they're, they're so cohesive they like even they do some, everything together sometimes the music they have is whack but when they dance together it's all it always looks great yeah. they, have, they have great great group numbers abby kathy is so busy trying to have this strategy to be abby and like i'm gonna get you know mia michaels even you could have the best choreographer come in that does not mean you're gonna have the best result no right? in case of anthony burrell well, or anyone else the thing I don't understand is, you know, she has all these people that go to her studio. If you were a part of her studio, wouldn't you be really upset that she's bringing all these other people in and not picking for right. your kids to be on this show each and every week? Mm-hmm. Because that's what Abby's doing. You know, Abby has a lot of people in her studio, and she does she's bring people loyal. from her studio. Like right. Hayden is someone that's in her studio already right. that joins them on the team. I don't understand why Kathy doesn't take from her people already and bring them in. Why it's bring Kathy's in these outside there. people? Kathy don't... It, does Kathy have other people? She might. I mean, I feel like she always. She ain't got no other people. I don't know, man. <laughs> maybe Kathy don't have no other maybe she has no one to, at that level. Like Kathy has you know. no other people. Yeah, if but... y'all know if Kathy has other people, <laughs> please uh, comment down below because I'm going to go with. But I, I was very happy to see Kaya Nakaya back, aka Missy Elliott. It was great. <laughs> it was, I, mean, it was, I mean, she looked and good. And Black Patsy was quiet for she the was. first time. Well, because she, she may not have been, but I they, didn't, they didn't edit that into. And the that show, hair so. was laid. She looked good. And she lost about ten pounds. Well, she on TV now. She got to look like a star. All right, so uh, let's go to the competition. We had uh, Mackenzie who had a solo. Doctor, um, doctor. 
yes, Do- Doctor Doctor Dance. Dance. <laughs> um, I actually saw she must have picked up something from Asia because I saw a little bit of sass in she there. She was really and good. The the kind of a cute, adorable mixed in with the sass. I think mm-hmm. she was definitely more confident now that Asia was gone. She was like, oh, okay, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, I don't have that same age level, same thing competition in Abby Lee. So it was just me against the other dancers and other companies, and I think that kind of sparked her confidence. Right. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> funny. Then we also had Kendall who had a solo. Who I, she actually did a really great job. Yeah, I, I, I wrote down. I was like, that's the best I've ever seen her dance. Yeah, I agree with that. Cause yeah. I mean, she was in it. Her turns were beautiful. Um, I felt like she. I don't know. There was a, this was a different side of Kendall that maybe they're evolving. That I haven't seen. Maybe they're evolving. I, maybe it's the same thing of like now there wasn't a Chloe or Peyton there this week. Yeah, yeah maybe so. they they just felt. Not so they under the pressure, free. felt a little yeah. more free to just free. do what they do. <laughs> to do what they do. Yeah. Um, then Maddie had a solo. I actually put question marks next to Maddie because I don't know if I, like, felt it. I don't ever feel it. I always feel Maddie. <sighs> okay. Her technique was great. Of course. Her technique is all But it's not, I guess hearing Amazing Grace. Yeah. And with that. With mm-hmm. that. And I feel like, like it was supposed song? to be, like, a spiritual, like lyrical she, something. Maddie but does it, not connect to the. She's so she's going through the motions. If you're dancing to Amazing Grace, if you know if you know that song and know and have a spiritual connection to Amazing Grace, or you've ever been in a church where they sang Amazing Grace, you would interpret it a little bit differently than just being that. You would live in the words. You would live to the movement. Maddie right. just bounces through the movement. Maddie gives you great technique. But again, there's nothing there. It's like a deer in headlights. It's like, yeah. oh, I'm just, I'm just flailing and dancing. And... <laughs> no, for I'm those of you, I wrote down she was perfect as always. For those Maddie, of you who are listening was... on our podcast, Jason attempted to do the Maddie. Thing. <laughs> and I, you know, and I, and look, I know she's only nine, and I, and I, I think she's she, like thirteen. I think okay, no, no, she's like twenty one. <laughs> just kidding. I think she's really talented, but I'm just saying, you're right, Tony. It, for a song like that, which was an awkward choice, and yeah. then to, to perform that way and not have any kind of real connection, emotion to it, it she might as well just walked around in a, in a circle on stage and, and, and did the face. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we had the group numbers. It was great. Uh, we had the Candy Apples uh, group number, which I thought the group their group number was really good. It was very powerful. A little too mature. Right. For, for the kids. Yeah. I, I thought the, the choreography and the movement and the concept mm-hmm. might have been a little too mature. I think if they were more so in their teens, and, and Blake even... He said that Blake, at the beginning, right? he, yeah. He said, he was like, yeah. I would give this to a senior class, but I'm giving it to juniors. And I'm just like... Setting up for foul. Well, not not setting up the fail. I think I think they were going for it, and I found it interesting. I thought it was great. I just thought it was a little too mature. I agree, it was, and there was, and there really wasn't. I don't know. I feel I, maybe I'm biased. Maybe I maybe I'm clueless. Maybe it's all those things. But I feel like <laughs> dance is supposed to speak to you in some way, shape, or form when you're watching it. Well, yeah. When I when I, when I watch it's like telling a story exactly mm-hmm. through movement. When I watch when I watch a piece, I want to be. I want to feel something. Made. It's sadness, death, you know, whatever. Yeah. And t- and that group routine was very. Um, it, it reminded me of like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Hidden Dragon. It was just too. It was too athletic for a competition. It wasn't really dance, I guess. I don't know. It was just it was too many things. It, it wasn't was too many posing kind of yeah, like I'm just like, you know, moving their leg kind of standing and Yeah, it wasn't there was it wasn't fluid. And not all dance is supposed to be the same. You know, right. all there's different styles, there's different, you know, ways to interpret it, but it was very mature and very awkward. Yeah. And maybe or and then plus the way it was videotaped and shot, it just they didn't capture the best moments of it, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. anyone else have thoughts on that? I mean, I thought it was. I mean, I thought it was pretty good for a candy apples dance. So. I I thought so too well, for the guest for stars the, and co-stars. Yeah. They they brought in a s- superior choreographer. Mm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, which helped out a yeah. lot with them. But once again, didn't get them to win the complete. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, then we had uh, Abby Lee uh, and their tribute to Hurricane Katrina. Um, <laughs> like I, I, like. You, when you brought that beautiful. up at the beginning, I thought it was good. But when you brought that up at the beginning, I almost forgot that that's what it was. Right. Like yeah. I didn't write anything down about that. Of like, well, I thought you know that was yeah. moving or inspiring or anything like no, that. No, I didn't. It, it was just a regular dance. Right. As with a, them in with that dresses, message, like, like 
behind well, it, but no one knew. Would that would that have resonated yeah. with you if, if you would? I mean, no, no it didn't. I, That's what, and that was the point I was making yeah. earlier when you guys were perplexed about what I was talking about. Not was that perplexed? We got it. She picked she picked such a such a powerful thing that's happened in one of the mo- the ex- one of the most expensive and most tragic natural disasters on U.S. soil in the history of this country, yeah. and to pay tribute to, it's like, okay. Well, you better do it justice, and no justice was done. So, but as far as the choreography went, it was great. Again, I, I thought it was great because they're they're so cohesive and they dance so well together. And you know, one thing when I watch them dance, you guys, I feel like they have a like there's a camaraderie there, like that they 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 know each other's struggle. That maybe we don't get to see a lot of a lot of what goes on behind the scenes, but I'm sure all those girls love each other. So they dance like that, and that, and it always does my heart well when I see them do a great group number because most of their group numbers are pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. Oh, that sums that up. <laughs> All right, so uh, in the end, uh, for we had uh, Mackenzie come in second, yay, for her solo. Kendall came in second yeah. for her solo. She did. That was Maddie, of course. All right, Maddie, of course, came in first. Mm. Uh, National champion. Yay. And then. Abby Lee Miller took it home with first place, Good and national. Candy Apples mm-hmm. came and said, I was actually a little worried for two seconds. I'm I know. Like, <laughs> you were shaking in your boots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, uh, but they, they did it. So, um, so yeah, so congratulations to the Abby Lee Miller Dance Company for doing a fantastic Rats. job this season. Uh, congratulations to Kathy and the Candy Apples for all of your guest stars and co-stars that attended <laughs> uh, your ev- uh, dance events uh, competitions this year. She said she's going back to the drawing table again. She needs Starting to, again. Abby. She needs to go back and draw in some permanent people is what <laughs> yeah. she needes to do. Instead of the with choreographer. A permanent I just, you know, and really, I do think... The, I know they talk about the universe, you know, if you, when you want something so bad, it's further away than if you still learn to let things happen, let it go. I do think if Kathy would just stop trying to one-up Abby and give that back to basics and get back to just being great dancers, great mm-hmm. dancer, I'm great, that'll come to her. Because it know? was kind of working. When they, she had all the guys, Yeah, it was working. She, I mean, the guys, everyone says that that's the advantage of... But oh, yeah, I, but I think but they were still, But they were still good, you know, dances right. going on there. So she was, she was getting back up there, and then she kind of... Yeah. Flipped everything awesome. again. Well, th- well, there we have it. A season finale of Dance Mom season 3.5.9. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I. But we still have the reunion. And even Abby says yeah. she might, she may not be back either mm-hmm. because you know her well, mom's not well. With her mom not doing well, and yeah. so she doesn't know if she That's can sad. do this again. So I don't know. We shall see. We shall see. We're, Abby, our, your, our prayers are with you. We wish you the best, you and your family. Yes. And um, news and gossip. Yeah. After Buzz yeah. TV news. Um, real quick, <laughs> September 27th is upon us, and that means my birthday is around the court. Anyway, <laughs> in, in other news, um, wow. don't forget to check out Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition on Lifetime TV at 9 p.m. And, yes. 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 and we host it. Yeah, awesome. yeah. we're on it. Good so, stuff. And you guys are, are hosting that, mm-hmm. that yes. after show. Right before this, guys, so don't right forget to watch. This. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, and, um, yeah. yeah, there you go. And don't forget to download Serial Buddies. Great time. Two very enthusiastic thumbs up. Great family fun. You're going to love it. iTunes, rate us, comment, tell a friend, and we love y'all. And also, uh, make sure you uh, support Brooke Highland on iTunes. <laughs> and I heard. And oh, my God. Bye, guys. Until next time, I'm Jason Carter. Follow me on Twitter at JDC Forever. First of all, wait a minute. How are you going to try to close out the show when we, haven't, saying, even, we <laughs> haven't even done anything? Yeah, you hear the music in the background, but you can't all of a sudden just close out the show. Hold your horse. You know, I'm going home. Tom, I'm going, you know, yes. I'm over uh, let here. everyone know where they can find you. Uh, they can find me on Twitter at Tom the Com. Who? Tom the Com. I know. It's, it's, Tom it's, the it's com. a nickname, yes. Uh, Christian Rosenberg gave that to me. Well, shout so. out to Christian Rosenberg. <laughs> Jason J. Carter, who has a birthday on September 27th. <laughs> <laughs> Libra. So, hey, um, follow me on Twitter at JDC Forever and also on Facebook at Jason J. Carter. Uh, until next time, you guys, take care, be well, and drive what? safe. What? What? Again? <laughs> Why do you keep I said bye to no. myself. He oh, said no someone else God. needs to give, give their stuff, and me too. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> hey, guys, you can find me on Twitter at Annika underscore Michelle and on my website, AnnikaMichelle.com and so, Facebook so and all those. Thank so, so you. Good, Annika. <laughs> and, of course, you guys can find me on at Lounging with Tony on all social media platforms, including Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And you can also find me at LoungingWithTony.com. A little shout-out to Mike and his roommate, Lauren, for hopefully still watching and tuning in. A big thank you to Tom and Annika for coming in. Yay! and Thank you. And it was awesome to be here. Jason Carter. <laughs> and also for <laughs> Marissa holding it down. In Marissa! The- oh, yeah! Boom! Okay. God love you.
All right, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will see you next week for the Dance Moms reunion. Until then, peace, love, and soul. <laughs> oh, you can close it out. Executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff. We would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Bye. 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 Bye.